Telegantic Mega Millions Studio. Your backstage tour is about to start. Stand by the studio. I'm quick on the set. We are going behind the scenes. On air in 10 seconds. Coming to camera. all lined up for you today and this ramble behind us are because we've got Cobra and Falcon from the Gladiators in and a special mystery guest. Ooh. Ooh. We're also going to be meeting Kate Mabel, who's start of Gulliver's Travels. And we're going once more Dance Dust Mania. Dance Dust Mania. For our usual Saturday morning dose of Taz. We're going to be meeting every diner's dream. Yes, that dream boy Nick Ailey. Yeah. And we're also going to be getting a little closer to this set behind us. To illustrate that when you see smoke in television, there's usually no fire. OK, Malcolm. Oh, Yeah. Yes, there'll be more from our little speedy friend a little later on. But now we want to know who is in today's... Celebrity Hey, who is it? It's the mighty Cobra Falcon. Hello, how are you doing? Today's spout of the century. Well, I'm a bit worried of her. She's really tough. Sure, oh, she, she is. is. She's, she's tough. tough. She's, she's tough. tough. She's she's tough. tough. Well, all we'll be real later on, won't it, chaps? Yes. Yeah, well, good luck. Right. Go and prepare Sorry. psychologically. That's right. Now we can exclusively reveal to you exactly who their opponent is. Doreen, our studio nurse. Let's hear it for Doreen. She won't be a champion. She won't be a champion. Doreen, are you nervous? Uh, just a little. Not so much a gladiator, more a gladioli. Yes, I think he got it right. <laughs> Well, we'll go and get prepared, <laughs> and uh, we'll see you later on for the Battle of the Century. Thank you. Thank you. Well, hey. Well, Bye. the gladiators may be big, but tomorrow night there's a brand new series about someone with a real size problem. Because tomorrow is the first in a mini series of Gulliver's Travels. It's the tale of an 18th century gentleman who travels into weird and wonderful lands. Yes, over eight years, Gulliver's Travels take him to very strange places, including oh, Lilliput, right. a land inhabited by tiny people, also a land in inhabited by talking horses, yeah. and a land of giants, yeah. and a whole lot more. <laughs> Oh. And Kate Mabley, star of Gulliver's Travels, is here in the studios today. Come in, Kate. Hello, how are you doing? Ah, oh, there you are. Now, Kate, so we've just seen you in the clip there, and you play a giant. Tell us about uh, your character. Well, she's called Glumdalclitch, and she's the only one in Brobdignag, which is the land of the giants, that's actually nice to Gulliver. So she just adores him. Oh, so it's a nice character there. Yeah, very. <laughs> and you do an American accent in, uh, in Gulliver's Travels. Was that tricky to learn? Not really, because I've done quite a few films with an American accent, and I did a film with an Irish accent. An so Irish I... accent? Go on, then. Give us, a, give us a little bit of an Irish accent. Well, I did a film with an Irish accent in Montreal a couple of years ago. <laughs> Whoa, that's convincing. Whoa. Fantastic. That is very impressive. <laughs> so you've acted in other films before, then? I did um, The Secret Garden a couple of years ago. And oh, that was great, that was. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> so, so back to Gulliver's Travels. It's, uh, it's full of special effects, so did it take ages and ages and ages to film? It took ages and ages and ages to put together at the end, but my bit to film didn't take too long because I just did my bit on my own, and then Gulliver did his bit on his own, right. and then the special effects people put them all together on the computers. Ah, and special yeah. effects. Now, that's what we've done, because <laughs> Kate's actually not a giant. Of course, she's just over here, just metres here away from us. Here in the studios. Hey, she. Hello for real, Kate. How are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> See, she's not a big giant. She's, okay. quite, she's quite small, really. Now, um, of course, in the, in the Gulliver's Travels, they use high-tech computer technology, not like we've done here. So what <laughs> no. were you looking at when we were talking to you? An apple. An apple. Oh, we're oh, just an, an apple. apple. We're just Did an we make apple. a good apple? Oh, yeah, <laughs> We were looking at the lights on the ce ceiling. <laughs> so what was it like, then, to act a thin air? It's, it's pretty confusing. I mean, when I started off, you know, I'm having a conversation with someone sitting on my hand. I mean, for the rehearsals, they gave me a little doll. But uh, then they took it away, and I'm just standing here going, so, how are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a senior lunar. So uh, we've got an example of Ted Danson talking, or working, certainly, in thin air here. And uh, can you tell us what's going on in this clip here? Well, this is the director, and he's poking, he's poking Ted with these sticks because this is when a giant wasp is attacking him uh -huh. because he's tiny. And this is the model, uh. so you can sort of push it away. And they put it all together on the computers so it makes it look as though there's wasp is crawling up in. This is when Gulliver's in the land of the giants, so everything's giant, even the insects. Yeah. <laughs> Which is your land. 
Oh, yeah. Wow, that's <laughs> the finished one. Oh, effect. Oh. Let's go through that. Yay. Now, this is my favourite bit of the film, this, because there's a prop from the film here. This is a doll's house, which you use in the film. This is where I keep Gulliver. I keep oh. him in a doll's house, and, yeah, I treat him like a doll, really. Wow. I bring him clothes and things. Was he a good doll? <laughs> Most of the time. A little grumpy, it. but... <laughs> anyway, Kate, thanks a lot for coming in today. It's been great talking to you. Now, everybody, you must watch out tomorrow night on Channel 4, Gulliver's Travels. Let's take a final look. It's going to be great. So, don't miss that. Now, stick around, because after the break, we've got Falcon and Cobra from the Gladiators Whoa. in a spectacular contest. Whoa. We're also going to the messiest diner in town, down the slops. Oh, diner, diner, yeah! Fantastic. And also got plenty more tunes, so don't go away. <laughs> we'll see you after the break. Bye! Bye. Bye. Special effects. <laughs> okay, we show up on stage with a great day, and you share it with Paul Daniels. Yes, Paul's 58 today, and whatever age you are, have a great day. We've got this present for Paul here. We're going to send it to him in the oh, post. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. Oh, okay then. Here we go. What have we got in there? We've oh. got the top hat. Oh, we've got the top hat there. Got... Oh, what's in the oh, oh, yeah. top? Hat. Oh, we got them. And, uh, and, and, and some other stuff. Well, whatever you're doing today, have a great birthday. So, happy, happy birthday, birthday to you! Right, now it really is time to... Check, check it out! out. Yes, today on Check It Out, we're going to be looking at pancake fillings. They're usually kind of boring, but we're going to look at some alternatives. And first up, over here, with potted blueberries and a bit of custard sauce, is Cobra from the Gladiators. What do you make of that, Cobra? Right, right, right. We're going to go on it up. Roll, roll, roll. roll, roll like you never rolled before. And, oh, my God. Oh, look at him go. What do you make of that? What do you think of it? It's lovely. It's lovely. I don't believe it. OK, moving on quickly to condensed milk with molasses and marshmallows. There it is. Looks nice. What do you make of that, Emily? Give it a roll. Go for it, Oh, it's all falling apart. Oh, my goodness. OK. Any good? OK. OK. I told you never to spit with your mouth. OK, moving on. Red cabbage and sautéed celery in a cheese sauce. And uh, we've got Falcon to try this one. OK, Falcon. She's rolling it up there like a true pro. What do you make of it, Falcon? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's nasty not as this one. My kind of filling. Not, not my kind of filling either, I can tell you that. Okay, this is my favourite already. Sweet and sour diced spam. Oh. Jack, what do you make of sweet and sour diced spam? Yeah. That sounds like the most disgusting oh. thing I've ever heard of. Go Check it out, it's getting more disgusting by the week. Spam, spam, yeah. spam, spam. Oh, go, go, go. And Jack, what do you make of it? Mmm, oh. yum, it's lovely. He likes it, Jack. Are you okay? Are you okay? I know these leastly wasps, oh, honey, with desiccated it. chocolate strands. And Emma's going to go for this one. Uh-oh, oh, oh, it's all falling oh, oh, apart. Little oh, big bite, big bite. Mm. Delicious. Delicious. Well, I've decided that this week's winner is going to be sweet well, and sour diced spam. Yeah, 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 yeah. uh, no, I don't want it. Uh, no, I'm definitely not going to. So, anyway, we advise you to <laughs> check it out. Now, believe it or not, about this set behind me was destroyed by fire last Wednesday and last Thursday and last Friday and will probably be destroyed a lot of times again. But the great thing is, it's all absolutely safe. So, Malcolm, blow your fuse. Three, two, one! <laughs> you see, in television, when you need a burnt-out set, it's just not practical to burn your set down, so the designer uses all sorts of tricks that we're going to show you now. Beginning with this burnt-out line of washing, for example. It's actually just washing that's been painted black to look like it was been burnt. And over here on the walls, they've just charcoaled them out black to make it look as if there's been a fire in there. And down here on the floor, it looks like the ceiling's collapsed and there's also the burnt wood everywhere, but it's just charcoal bricks. And if you come in here and look at this work surface, it's had water spilt on it to make it look like firefighters have been in here. And when you need smoke effects, you have to hire a professional and he'll supply you with all the smoke you need. And all the smoke coming out the waste paper bin is just from a smoke pellet. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, hey! <laughs> sparking fuse box. Now, that's actually not a real sparking fuse box. It's just a, a small charge which is set off around the back called a robot. And over here, if you look at the wisps of smoke coming out the toaster, no, it's not Dave's toast. It's actually <laughs> attached to a wire here and done from a battery. Whew, and in the <laughs> oven down here, <laughs> which is full of smoke, <laughs> it's actually just been fed with a smoke gun which heats up hot oil and that's been fed there <laughs> via a pipe. 
<laughs> and the majority of the smoke, all the wisps on the floor, is just from this hose pipe along here, which is attached to a smoke gun at the end that Chris Aprot's man's pressing. <laughs> and, uh, as you probably know, this stuff was all done by professionals. So whatever you do, don't, don't try, try it at home. home. And our professional today was Malcolm Armstrong. Thank you very much for coming in, Malcolm. Oh, thank thanks you. a lot, Malcolm. Thank you. Now for one final special effect, the fire alarm. Now that's just played into from a soundtrack onto the floor. <laughs> Cartoon time! The first Brooksider to blow up their balloon to burst introduces the cartoon! <laughs> Training program in there. Have a look. Have a look. Okay, let's have a look. Come on, then, let's have a look. Well, it's not that special. I think it's very special, my son. Oh, my goodness. Well, stick around if you want to find out what the gladiators are in training for right now, because we'll see after the break. We're also going to be going behind the scenes on Okie Doke. And we'll also be hooking up with the man who's got more front than Bognery, just Nick Ailing in the Slob's Diner. Okay, everyone, to the top. Okay. Don't go away! <laughs> celebrity to tell us something a little secret. So, Brookside Mick Johnson, spill the bean. Hey, what's it time for? Spill the beans! Hi, I'm going to spill the beans, Brookside, but, well, you know he's supposed to be on a diet, and Gene and Ron are our counting commandants, make sure about that. But girls, when you thought he wasn't having a sweet, wrong. Both Katie and Jackie were getting one each and sending them back to him. He's got no discipline. Sorry, Sim, but they made me do it. Woo, indeed. And remember, you heard it here first. And now it's time to go down to the Slop's Diner. And dining today are Natalie Kirkman and her dad, Richard. Because when they were on holiday, he didn't catch her at the bottom of the water slide. Oh. And she sprained her thumb. What do we think of that? Slop-worthy! So without further ado, let's go to see the show that delivers yes. this. <laughs> Standing by to record, please, and cue Nick. And welcome back to Slop's Diner, the sloppiest diner in town. Our diner of the day is Rick Kirkman. He's been brought here by his daughter, Natalie. Rick's gone for today's special, The Sloppy Dog. And now it's time for the game. Rick, I'm going to ask you three questions. If you get just one wrong, you'll be Sloppy Dog. However, if you get all three right, we do a slop swap, and Natalie will get Sloppy Dog. OK. First question. What is worth more? Is it Elvis Presley's driving licence or is it Michael Jackson's white rhinestone glove? Elvis Presley's driving licence. OK, second question. What is heavier, Anthea Turner's alarm clock or Vera Duckworth's heated rollers? Vera Duckworth's heated rollers. Fine. And the third question. What is my favourite bedtime snack? Is it hot chocolate and marshmallows, or is it banana custard? Banana custard. Banana custard. The big moments. Drum roll, please. <laughs> Mr Kirkman, I asked you three questions. You gave me three fantastic answers, and I'm very happy to tell you, you got all three wrong. <laughs> Take it away. <laughs> That'll teach you, won't it? <laughs> OK, let's find out the answers to those questions. I asked, what is worth more, Elvis Presley's driving licence or Michael Jackson's white rhinestone glove? And the answer is... Michael Jackson's white rhinestone glove. Bad luck, you got that one wrong. I then asked you, what is heavier, Anthea Turner's alarm clock or Vera Duckworth's heated rollers? And the answer is... Anthea Turner's alarm clock. Bad luck, you got that one wrong as well. And the final question was, what is my favourite bedtime snack? Hot chocolate and marshmallows or banana custard? And the answer is neither, because I actually like vanilla ice cream with glacé cherries. Bad luck, Rick. Did you enjoy your meal? It was lovely. Thanks, mate. Brilliant. Well, I've got a very special prize for you. Thank you very much, Hillary. It is the Golden Slop Dog. And Natalie, have you enjoyed your meal? 
Absolutely great. Brilliant. Well, I've got a very special prize for you as well, Cynthia. It's the sloppy doggy bag, complete with baseball cap and T-shirt. But you also get to deliver the ultimate takeaway. Take it away, Natalie! Yes, fantastic. Well, thanks for dropping into slots. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. But remember, one day we might be delivering a takeaway to you. Ciao. Uh -oh. Holding shot on camera one, Nick. And that's a cut. Hold on, guys. Filing cabinet. Now, what would you expect to find in here? Paper, maybe? No, have a look in this drawer. Moles. Look, aren't they sweet? And I have to show you this one in the bottom drawer. Look, hedgehogs. Look, that's little Libby. Now, this is the studio where they film stop frame animation for Okie Doke. And if you look in this drawer, you can see him as a little green acorn character. Oh, there's a baby one. And he lives with his friends over there. Hi, Em. <gasps> what are you up to? Oh, hello. This is Brian, the director. It's a good job you come in when you did. I'm just having a look at your storyboard, if that's all right. Brian, how long would it take you to film a frame like that? Um, well, we, we try to get each animator to film about 14 seconds worth of film per day. <gasps> <clears throat> so a shot like this, the timing is just over three seconds, yeah. but it's got quite a lot of characters in it, so you've got to bear that in mind. So it might actually take two, two, two to three hours. Hello, Paul. Hello, Anne. Oh, now, this is Paul. He's one of the animators on Okie Doke. So what are you up to? Do you think I could have a go today? I don't see why not, yes. I've just been doing a, a very simple shot with Okie where he's waving. This is a surface gauge. This is what I'm using to mark Okie's position. Yeah. Um, what you do is, is you mark... Come and have a look. Come round. ...the position of his finger yeah. or something like that. Any part of his body that's moving. Yeah. And um, so that you know how far it's moved after you've moved it. And then you bring it in ready for the next shot? Yes, yes. You have to take it out, obviously, when you're taking the frame of film. Go so, on, then. Show me. Do okay, I'll show you. And there he is, waving. And there he goes, waving, yes. So what does the machine actually do? That um, records um, all the frames so that you can see the whole shot together. Yeah, and it automatically stops and gets yes. in position ready for the next shot. Gets ready for the next frame, yes. Come on, then show me what to do. Okay, put the gauge in. All right, so all you've got to do now is just move, move his, his arm a little bit that way. Tell me when to stop. Okay, stop. Right there. That's really good. <laughs> You're an animator now. Come on, then, let's have a look. Here he goes. <laughs> hey, did you see that? That was my last shot, that. And this is what the whole of Oaky Hollows looks like. Now, this miniature set isn't being used today, so it's been shoved out in the corridor. And this is where miniature Oaky was waving goodbye. So, bye-bye. on the half of Telegantic Megavision is Doreen Askin. Yes! That's right, Dave. Doreen comes in at a height of 5 foot 5 inches. She weighs 119 pounds. She's giving away 217 pounds. Is she going to take their heads or just their pulses? And here she is! Now, Doreen is poised to face Cobra and Falcon. She challenges them to answer her specially prepared gladiatorial questions. Here we go. Cobra, you were named after a snake, but what do you have any pets of your own? Yes, I've got three cats and a dog called Rebel. Oh. What are the cats' names? Uh, Pebble, <laughs> Bam Bams, and Bonnie. <laughs> Falcon, the gladiator games are so difficult. Do you ever get frightened of your opponents? Oh. Careful, careful. No. Oh. I can't believe that. Cobra, <laughs> who is your best friend amongst the other gladiators? Well, Falcon, of course. Yeah. Oh. Do you ever see Wolf? Yeah, he lives in the kennels down the road there. Oh. 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 I should have said that, he's going to kill me. Oh. Listen, when you bump into him next time, will you say, uh, Doreen said, hello? <laughs> Fantastic, Doreen. <laughs> <laughs> 
your costumes are so beautiful, but they don't look very warm. <laughs> <laughs> what are they made from? They're made from lycra, but each one is individually hand-painted, so they're very, very special. Ooh. Now, Cobra, if I wanted to be as fit as you, how much exercise would I have to do? Well, you'd have to train twice a day. Ooh. That's OK. Right. I can do that. Yeah. For I two hours that. each time. Yeah. But no I wouldn't problem. suggest you start training until you're over 16. Oh. Piece of cake. <laughs> Falcon, you lead such an active life, but what do you do to relax? Um, because I lead such an active life, I tend to do things like go to the cinema, uh, watch videos, Ooh. and just spend time with my son, Adam. Cool. Oh, 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 get him back, <laughs> And Cobra. <laughs> Emma, fantastic. And I'd like to thank my coach and all my supporters. <laughs> and I've had a fantastic oh, time. Oh, it was great! Gladys, you've got to admit that our door's a bit of a knockout, isn't she? Oh, she's one tough less. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, so what are you guys up to soon, then? Well, we've got our fourth live show at yeah. Wembley. Yeah. And the dates are... The 11th to the 14th of April. That's this Thursday to Sunday. Be there! Yeah. Yeah. So go check that out. Now, there's so much being filmed around the Telegantic Megavision well, Studios. Oh, oh, lots of things. And we can't get round to all of it, so you're just oh. going to have to check out the ITV this week. And now, it's cartoon time. Introduced by Gareth Jones, who will explain how to introduce a cartoon. <laughs> point something out to you. You ever watch cartoons? They usually have a, a large bovine animal which supplies milk. You know what it is? It's a cow. cow. And uh, in a cartoon, when you punch someone, you get a sound effect. And what's that sound effect? Cow. And did I tell you about the member of the How team who, li cow. who lives just outside of London on the west side? Really? No! Slow! That's how you introduce a cartoon. Cow. Oh! Thank you very much to Falcon and Cobra from the Gladiators. Let's hear it for them. Thank you very well, much. Well, let's have a big cheer for our new champion, Dory the Nurse. Yay! Yay! Yes, indeed. Dory won't be here next week, but we definitely will be. So make sure you join us. See, See you then. then. Bye! Bye.